Hi everyone, Patrick again with Titan Consultants and Engineers, and I wanted to cover some of the basic topics of value engineering or VE in the construction industry. This subject isn't utilized or discussed as much as it should, and it's unfortunate because VE could save on average more than 10% of your overall project cost in doing this without sacrificing safety or quality. Every owner or government agency should consider utilizing VE during the design phase, typically about 60% in, to get the maximum benefit of VE. And you need to have a different set of eyes on your project. Don't settle for your design team saying, this is the only way of doing it, this is how much it's going to cost. If you go through the traditional design bid build or design build delivery process, I can almost guarantee there's going to be excessive expenditures on your project. So this comes out of the owner's pocket, or if it's a government agency, this comes out of all of our pockets ultimately. So what is VE? I define it as an organized effort directed at analyzing design, building features, systems, equipment, and material selections for the purpose of achieving essential functions at the lowest life cycle cost consistent with required safety and quality. So a common misconception of this definition is that the term would be utilized in an effort to only reduce the scope of the project to save money. But that is not the concept of VE. VE, the concept of VE is achieving the overall, uh, achieving a maximum value of the project or getting the best bang for your buck. Reducing the scope is simply reducing the scope of the project. So let's let's begin the VE process by creating a typical uh, construction project. We're going to build a typical office building. So first thing, and, and one of the most important things, is picking the team. So for a, a traditional office building, we're going to set up the team. First member you're going to have is your certified value specialist. This person is going to be the hub for all lines of communication amongst all the disciplines. Next, you're going to need your design team. This is your architect, structural engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer for their design perspectives. Next, you're going to have your owner. This we're, We need to discuss the facility's overall objectives and desires. Next, you're going to need a contractor. We need to have a production perspective of the project. Next, you're going to have your cost estimator to determine the existing uh, and the VE values of our uh, ideas. Finally, you're going to need a construction manager to discuss the overall operations perspective of the VE. So once this team is established, we can start our study or our pre-workshop. Here we'll do our site visit, we'll review design documents, create a cost estimate if needed, or a modification to an existing one. The objective of this phase is to have a thorough understanding of the project with all of the VE members. Once we've done our pre-workshop, we can start the actual workshop. And the actual workshop is consistent of six phases. Your information phase, your functional analysis phase, your innovation phase, analytical phase, development phase and your presentation phase. So we'll get started right, uh, right away into the information phase. It's here we're going to define the owner's objectives and we'll develop a thorough understanding of the decisions that have influenced the design on the project. Each discipline looks into each potential system at question and determines its value to the owner and the overall cost of the system. This phase will begin the process of narrowing down the VE targets. So for our office building, for example, let's, let's put an example out there. The owner is concerned about safety for personnel near the windows of the facility. So this has uh, influenced the design of the project so that the architect designs blast resistant windows. Now we have this information in at hand, we'll move on to the next phase, the functional analysis phase. It's here the team looks at each potential system in question and asks two important questions. 
what does the system do and what must the system do? It's here we'll start to see the potential for saving. So for our previous example of the blast resistant windows, the design documents calls for specific window brand. This particular window brand happens to be not only blast resistant, but pressure resistant as well. The owner's objective is to only have uh, blast resistant windows. So already here in step two, we can see that we have some potential for savings on this project. So we'll move into the next phase, which is the innovation phase. Here the systems in question are addressed to seek cost effective alternatives while maintaining the same necessary function of the system. This is where the experience and the knowledge of all the disciplines is needed the most. Here brainstorming and rough ideas are discussed. Those rough ideas spawn more rough ideas and the ones that are practical to all the GE members go into the next phase. So let's go back to our example of the blast resistant windows. Obviously there's a safety concern for shattered glass uh, for the facility. The contractor throws out there an idea of removing the blast resistant windows and instead of just put a shatter proof film over the windows and let's put barricades at the ballers and at the entrance so the facility would deter intruders. The architect isn't thrilled with that idea, so we place trees and shrubs to conceal the barricades. And let's say the entire team is okay with this concept and would like to push it through to the next phase. So once we push that through into the next phase, we'll go into the analytical phase. The rough ideas are evaluated for implementation in the project. The ideas that are later discovered to be impractical, not beneficial, or cost effective in implementing are discarded, and further development will be placed on the ideas that present the most value improvement to the project. So let's say, say the example of the blast resistant windows has made it through into this phase, and we have now discovered that the proposed utility lines would be in the way of where the barricades and bollards will go. Fortunately, we're in the design phase, and all we have to do is move that utility line over 10 feet, no problem. So once we get through the analytical phase, we go straight into the development phase. The systems that make it into this phase begin underway of development into the project and an assessment of the new system costs are compared to the original. So in this phase, concepts must be developed to completely show that the function of this new system meets or exceeds the original one. So back to our example, um, it is here that we'll determine the added cost for the window film, the bollards, the barricades, shrubs, uh, any additional work to the utility lines. We'll deduct the blast resistant and pressure resistant windows because that was based on our original budget. Uh, we'll, you'll need to develop supporting documentation to uh, sh clearly show that this meets or exceeds the objective requirements of the facility. Once you have gone through this, all that paperwork, you can finally get into the final, uh, the final phase, the presentation phase. So it's here the ideas are attempted to be sold to the owner, quote unquote. This may come via written report, oral presentation, or both. Each member of the team should discuss the pros and cons of the proposed idea uh, without reservation. Uh, it's not the VE job member's idea to sell an alternative, but their opinions and expertise are needed in each alternative. So that ultimately concludes the VE process. At this point, it's the owner's decision on whether to accept any or all or some of the alternatives for implementation into the project. But I wanted to go ahead and just cover that brief snapshot of the concept of VE. Uh, we'll soon be posting more in-depth analysis on each phase in the future. Again, my name is Patrick Gant with Titan Consultants and Engineers, and thanks for watching.